Christy. Steve, I hope I pronounced your last name right. Okay. Oh, oh. public podium in the middle. Hello. Okay, there we go. Thank you, Madam Chair and uh, members of uh, the committee. Um, I had a brief uh, conversation with uh, Councilman Jacob Cupin. Uh, I understand he's going to defer this piece of legislation at, uh, uh, at this meeting today. Um, my concern is it's really, to me, overly broad. And it's hard to comment on something when I guess it could be interpreted many, many different ways. And I don't really want to be in, uh, in the position of speculating. Um, it specifically mentions, well, there's eight whereas. I mean, there's quite a few that are there. I don't know why that has to be so many. Um, but, oh, excuse me, that's, no, that's in the legislation, excuse me. Um, but it, it asks for a report. And I don't know who's going to be drafting this report. I don't know. I'm, there's all these various departments. And so uh, I'd like to know who's, I think Jacob's going to try to get some clarification on that, then that would really be helpful. But one of the things it says here, uh, in section three, the council further requests that immediate actions be taken to remedy the issues identified in this resolution. Since there's a lot there, that raises a lot of concerns for me because I don't know what immediate actions are going to be taken. Immediate actions, the report is gonna be due sometime in 2025. So we're going to take some immediate actions and then have a report. So I think this uh, piece of uh, this resolution needs more work. I think J Jacob is working on that. So I appreciate that. And we'll sit down and confer uh, later on this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next um, public comment sign up is Jeanette Barker on BL 2024-306. And I'll hold up my hand when you have about 15 seconds left because the the time is not going onto the screen for you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair and uh, Council members. My name is Jeanette Barker. I am a Vice President with the Nashville Downtown Partnership, speaking on behalf of the Second Avenue uh, Tourism Improvement Zone Bill in front of you. Um, setting up this TIZ with a specific timeline and end, end date to accommodate the construction plan on second is a simple but effective way to ensure flexibility for business owners who have been trying everything they can to stay afloat until the reimagined Second Avenue becomes a reality. The end goal here with this bill is to find simple and effective ways to expand permissible use of the right of way and allow businesses to better combat the natural decline in pedestrian traffic that comes with a major construction project such as this. The decline in pedestrians does equal a decline in sales and or decline in potential sales. And that's also a decline in Metro tax revenues as well. The bill not only grants pre-approved permissions for a broad list of business and promotion enhancing mechanisms, it also waives permit fees for these business owners, which is a small but still helpful way to remove barriers of success. At this stage, we know that 25 of 46 street level businesses did close on Second Avenue after the pandemic and bombing. Of these that remain, 70% of them today are locally owned. All of them have seen decreased revenues as a result of the declining pedestrian traffic. We know that these businesses rely on patrons meandering where they already are, which is on Broadway, um, and meandering up the avenue. Until the bombing, Second Avenue saw about 27% of Broadway's pedestrian count. After the bomb, it dropped to 20% of Broadway numbers, and now it's 12% of Broadway numbers on second. This is a marathon, not a, a sprint, and we've been working on supporting these businesses and property owners um, ever since the blast. And thank you for considering. All right, thank you. Um, those are the only signups we have today. Did anybody else want to speak during the public comment period? Okay. Without that, we'll move on to our agenda. Uh, today, uh, items on not on consent, that's a lot shorter. So the ones that I have not on consent are items 1, RS 2024-351, items 9, BL 2024-254, item 10, BL 2024-306, item 11, BL 2024-307. Is there anything else that needs to come off consent? Um, yes, 
Council Member Bradford. Oh, where is it? Item number seven. <laughs> Item number seven. Are there are any other items? Um, yes, Council Member Ellis. Okay. Item number two. It's off consent. Any other items? Okay. Seeing none, we will read the consent. RS 2024-370, Coop and Porterfield, Tombs and Others, accept a donation from 1111 Church Ground Lessee LLC in the amount of $19,204.14 as a contribution towards infrastructure improvements in the vicinity of 1111 Church Street. Item 4, RS 2024-371, sponsored by Porterfield, Tombs, Parker, and Evan Siegel, authorizes the Metro Department of Water and Sewer which is Services to fund an increase in to the agreement between the United States Department of the Army and Metropolitan Government for the Mill Creek Flood Risk Mitigation Project in Davidson County, Tennessee. Item number five, RS 2024-372, sponsored by Porterfield, Tombs, Parker, and others, approves a grant application for an education and outreach grant from the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation to the Metro Water Services Department to expand and focus education and outreach about proper recycling and materials management to Tennessee citizens. Item number six, RS 2024 374 Porterfield Tombs Parker and others approves a grant application for an organics management grant from the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation to the Metro Water Services Department to continue a pilot food scraps pickup program to ensure that food scraps that would otherwise end up in a landfill are diverted for compost to expand organics recycling in Davidson County. Item number eight, RS 2024-375 amends ordinance number BL 2023-126 to authorize the Metropolitan Government to accept additional public water main and vertical raising of existing public water main for two properties located at 524 Edwin Street and 504B Edwin Street, also known as Edwin Greens, Phase 2, Revision 1. Item number 12, BL 2024-308. Uh, Porterfield and Parker approves Amendment 1 to the contract between the Metropolitan Government and Southern Sales Company, a division of 10 Carva Machinery. Item 13, BL 2024-309, Porterfield and Parker authorizes the Metropolitan Government to authorize the Director of Metro Water Services or his designee to execute a settlement agreement and release of liability. Item 14, BL 2024 310, Gamble and Parker authorizes the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing public utility easement rights for the specific area of property located at 401 St. Francis Avenue. Item 15, BL 2024, 311, Cash, Gamble and Parker authorizes the Metropolitan Government to accept new public water main and fire hydrant assembly for property located at 2415 Vanderbilt Place, also known as Vanderbilt Garland Hall. Item 16, BL 2024, 312, uh, Gamble and Parker authorizes the Metropolitan Government to accept new public sanitary sewer mains, public sanita sanitary sewer manholes and easements for three properties located at 9901 Moppin Road, 1102 and 1106 Waller Road, Brentwood and Williamson County. Item 17, BL 2024-313, Coupon Gamble Parker authorizes the Metropolitan Government to accept new public water main for property located at 630 Division Street, also known as The Depot. Item 18, BL 2024-314, Harrell, Gamble, and Parker authorizes the Metropolitan Government to accept new public water and sanitary sewer mains, new public fire hydrant assembly and sanitary sewer main holes for property located at Hamilton Church, unnumbered, also known as Brook Ridge Hamlet. Item 19, BL 2024-315, Vogue, Gamble, Parker authorizes the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing public water main and to accept new public water main for property located at 1919 Division Street. Is there anything else that needs to come off the consent agenda? All right, seeing none, can we have a motion? Second. All in favor? Any opposed? Any not voting? All right. What we have? Ten. Okay. All right, item number 
one RS 2024-351 Coop and Horton Huffman and others, a resolution requesting certain departments of the metropolitan government to provide a comprehensive analysis of recommended changes to increase the safety, security, housing resources for the unhoused and cleanliness of properties surrounding the Cumberland River within the downtown interstate loop. Um, the sponsor is here. Councilmember Coopin, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, can I move for a two meeting deferral with a brief comment? Yes. Um, so uh, as Mr. Ryder talked about earlier, um, this can I bill- I a second on that oh, sorry. motion? Sorry. All right, now, yes. <laughs> Great, thanks. Um, so as Mr. Ryder, talked about the, the bill was filed, it had some vague pieces to it, some things that were not necessarily getting exactly to what the goal was. Um, there were some questions that I had about people thinking that we were putting fencing along the entire riverfront, which is not the case. Our goal is to enhance access to the river, but fence a particularly um, dangerous section. Um, have had a couple great meetings with the administration as well as multiple departments named in the document um, to work on fleshing this out. There's already some of the immediate action being requested already being taken. Um, so I'd like another two meetings to kind of get this verbiage right to make sure that we do achieve those goals and don't um, accidentally ask for something that we don't want, but make sure that what we do want is uh, is asked for. So I would like to have a two meeting deferral, please. All right. Um, anybody wish to speak? Oh, <laughs> Councilmember Cash, you sure? Um, <laughs> all in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? All right. All right, item number two, um, RS 2024-369, Parker Coopin and Evan Siegel, a resolution expressing the endorsement of the Metropolitan Council for the Connect Downtown Action Plan. Uh, Councilmember Coopin, you're recognized. Thank you. Uh, would like to move approval with a brief comment. Right, do I have a second? All right. Thank you. Um, so Connect Downtown, for uh, those who may not know, or, uh, is a kind of comprehensive master plan um, occurring over a large period of time to enhance the connectivity and flow of downtown Nashville. This was undertaken over a two year process with multiple stakeholders and community meetings and engagement. Um, there's some things that everybody loves in there. There are definitely some things that not everybody loves yet. Um, so it's, it's a plan that involves change and involves adjusting things that we're used to. So it's, that's never an easy process. Um, but the end goal is to create better connectivity, better flow through our core um, of downtown Nashville. So I'm really excited by it. Uh, I think that there's been a lot of time and effort and energy and in, put into it and thankful for all the departments um, and stakeholders that have worked on this. Um, and so uh, really supportive of its approval. Um, all right, uh, council member Allen and then council member Ellis, just in the order I saw. All right, council member Allen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I'm, I'm excited about this. I think it's great. I appreciate all the work that is done. I do want to go on on record as as saying I am I am sad that this does not include the return of the downtown circulator. Some people remember a bus that just drove around downtown and had fixed routes. The people who knew how to use it loved it. A lot of people did know how to use it, and that's the problem we need to fix. I think not just saying we shouldn't have it. So I would I would love to that as we as we evaluate and continue to talk about what else might we add that at least that'd be part of the conversation. Thank you, Council Member Allen, Council Member Ellis. Thank you. Uh, two questions. Uh, do we know how much, uh, what's the cost of implementing each of the three phases? Um, is there anybody from NDOT that would like to take that? Good afternoon, everyone. Diane Alicone, Director of the Department of Transportation Multimodal Infrastructure. We uh, do not have a total broken down of what it costs because it is meant to be done over a 10 to 12 year phasing and prices do change. And then at each one of the phases, we do plan on having evaluations with the community. We're hoping that some of the changes we do in phase one will really help alleviate some of the congestion issues we have in downtown. We're really hoping that um, it also help with some of the traffic movement with the loading and loading. Uh, right now we do have three and a half million dollars in a grant 
for to start the traffic signals. So uh, all overall for all the signalization in the downtown, we did get an estimate of 11 million for that, but at least we have a grant to start it. We also went after another grant to get the rest of the dollars to do it. So a lot of the opportunities in Connect Downtown, we can actually do through grants. A lot of it we'll be doing also in-house, especially through phase one. And then our curb management program, we actually received a pilot uh, that we re, uh, from a company, so that is actually not costing us anything as well. So coming out of phase one, we really anticipate that a, a lot of that will be done through it internally with staff, as well as through some grant opportunities in this pilot opportunity. And then hopefully after a year into this and the evaluation we do, we're going to see some improvements and then we'll work with the community on the ne next out of the box um, initiative to take place. Thank you. Thank you, Director Councilman Morales. Thank you. Uh, a two-part question. Assuming that um, this plan this plan passes, and then assuming that the oh, uh, Councilman Morales, I'm sorry, we're having a lot of trouble hearing you oh, up here. Sorry. You, oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. So, assuming that the uh, this plan uh, passes, I know this is just a resolution, but the overall plan passes and the transit proposed transit referendum uh, does not pass the traffic signal enhancement would that only be for downtown so uh, Connect Downtown does only take into consideration the improvements of the traffic signals in the downtown core got it so the three million dollar grant is only for the downtown yes ma'am okay thank you mm -hmm. Um, thank you, Director. Councilmember Ellis, do you have any other questions? Okay, uh, Councilmember Coupin. Um, give me. Okay. Thank you. Um, I apologize that I forget if this is Connect Downtown or another transit plan, but could I ask um, Director Alarcon to speak to the circulator bus piece? Because I believe that it, it, while we are not getting the circulator bus, which I too do miss, it was great. Um, I believe that they're looking at frequency and transit priority corridors that will create a circulator that's moving every two to three minutes in the core. Um, that gives kind of at least something similar to it. It's not the same, but similar. But I would like the director to speak to that if she doesn't mind. Thank you. Uh, I, I do wish that uh, I had Felix from WeGo here um, as well, because I know that when we did the presentation, it was not something that was actually drafted as a recommendation, but it was something that was discussed and it's not off the table. So the goal is to create it, to create the way, to, what the issues are today. Our hope is through doing the recommendations that have come out of connect downtown, we're going to see those improvements that would have some financial savings that might allow us to consider bringing the circulator back or something equivalent to that that would meet the needs and the benefit of all of the residents in downtown because we have seen that number grow. Um, but right now, the focus of the plan was to focus on how we could fix moving transit, which is not happening well, moving people safely, how we can make all the modes work better together with each other today. Um, but it certainly doesn't take anything off the table in the future either. It's We're hopeful that as we move through the recommendations, we're going to see these improvements, that it's going to make a difference, that we can keep advancing forward, and then hoping for some financial savings. I'm not sure if y'all remember, but um, in the study, one of the things that came out of it is that it took, at, at key peak times, it took the bus from anywhere from nine and a half minutes to 13 minutes to go from the central state station to KVB. And if you think about that from a regional perspective, WeGo then has to put another bus out there and another bus and another bus so that they're staying on their headway timing. If we can get it so we can, they can reliably get out of downtown and they don't have to put that, that's savings that can be looked at in other operations within the WeGo biz, uh, uh, service delivery. So that's one of the outcomes that we are hoping that we will be able to provide. So I remember Felix saying very clearly, it's, it's not that it wasn't recommended, it's just we were looking at fixing the issues that we had today, but opening up other opportunities for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Um, Councilmember Kuvin, did you have anything else? Does anybody else have anything? Okay, all in favor say aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Okay, thank you.
So that's 10 in favor, no against one not voting. All right, item number seven, RS 2024-374 amends ordinance number BL 2024-239 to authorize the metropolitan government to abandon additional public water mains, fire hydrant assemblies and easements for property located at one terminal drive, also known as BNA Concourse D expansion. Um, Council member Bradford. Oh, I'm so sorry, council member. Here you go. Thank you. Um, this is one of the first examples of this type of legislation coming through after the state law has been changed um, to allow these types of bills be passed on resolution instead of ordinances. Also, and for that reason, as well as um, some issues that my district has been experiencing with BNA, um, I would ask for my colleagues' um, consent to the, uh, defer this one meeting. Okay, we have a motion to defer one meeting and a second. Does anybody want to say anything? Um, Council Member Hill. Hey, I just want to stand up in, in opposition of the deferral. I, I really truly understand the heart of my colleagues and why they're trying to kind of hold this up. But BNA is bigger than just that district and just Nashville and just the region. It's kind of the whole area. And, and this is just to abandon a a water main so that concourse D and the things can move forward. And this really affects an awful lot of people. Uh, it's going to bring an awful lot of jobs and stuff to Nashville. And, and I think this is much bigger than just trying to kind of push B and A our way. And so I ask to uh, vote forward. Okay. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Benedict and then Council Member Allen. Um, Council Member Benedict. Thank you, Vice Chair. So um, I guess I have a question for the, I don't know if who's here for maybe the airport authority or whomever, or the, but what delay, or maybe the administration chair, sorry, I'm looking around and trying to get my point out. What would a deferral do to um, impact operations relative to this legislation? Thank you, Council Member. Um, at the moment, um, we can find out exactly the impact of the deferral. Um, we are in communication with officials from BNA, uh, but we know we don't have any information as far as their thoughts on a possible deferral at this time. I guess um, with that in mind, I'd like to understand what the impact is. I stand with my colleague from. The district, he knows um, this uh, property, this operation better than I believe most of us on this body, uh, not all of us perhaps, but I believe most of us. And I do trust his judgment that if um, there's something that's going to minimally impact the operation while uh, working to, um, uh, I, I just, I stand with him in that if this is something that we can can do to um, slow this down and and not have a tremendous impact, or perhaps maybe we will have one, but I think I want to understand what that impact is. An automatic a deferral in this committee would mean an automatic deferral tomorrow night. So I think I'd rather uh, have it go through committee and then t find out that impact. If we could get that information, potentially, uh, could we get that information tonight or in the morning? Oh, sorry. Yes, I can have it to you by the, tomorrow morning. Okay, so if we can have it tomorrow morning, then I'd like to, to uh, I'm not going to vote, I'm supportive deferral in committee, but I potentially will support one tomorrow night on the floor. Thanks. Thank you, Council Member, Council Member Allen, and then Council Member Bradford. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I appreciate this discussion, and I, and I don't think anybody wants to slow down the airport expansion. I think we all think that it's great. We had a fantastic tour out there and learned a lot about what they're doing. My understanding, this is more about a specific item that just needs a little bit more time and that having the opportunity to get folks to the table and talk about dealing with that one specific item um, could be could be meaningful. Um, whereas I don't believe a two week deferral on this abandonment is gonna change the course of, of how BNA expands. Um, so so I am supportive of, of the deferral if we can, we can, if that can just forward um, some conversations that need to be had in the near future. Okay, council member Bradford. Thank you, I just wanted to address what one of my colleagues had mentioned about um, the airport and its impact on the city. 
my district is directly impacted by airport and its growth. And for the last year, the airport has stonewalled every resident in my community who has asked questions, who has had concerns about what's going to happen to their homes and their property immediately adjacent to this airport. And this time last year, the airport promised to hold a meeting for folks in the Dawson and South Nashville area to address concerns about the growth, about the, uh, the, the noise being generated by the airport, and the potential loss of businesses that we are actually seeing happen in the district because of the airport. That meeting never happened. And each time I've request, I've reached out to the airport for information about when that meeting is going to happen, they come up with more excuses as to why they need to wait. And so this uh, delaying this bill two weeks is not going to have a major impact on the airport. And all it will do is show the airport authority and the airport leadership that this body is siding with the people of District 13, that we're tired of being ignored, and that we want them to finally come to the table and be a collaborative partner with our community that they claim to be. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Um, Council Member Kupin. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, I share the sentiments of uh, my colleagues, especially Council Member Benedict, of, uh, you know, we don't want to unreasonably delay the airport expansion. I think we're all relatively supportive of, of that piece, but I also recognize, especially as someone who has a district that has many citywide elements to it, the um, need to support the council member that is currently in that district that is over, that has seen what's going on there and, and recognizing that issues. And then I also recognize that the entity in question that's being discussed um, is also in my district as well. Um, so I would tend to be supportive of the same concept as Councilman Benedict of a you know, move through committee today and then um, get some more information to make sure that this doesn't in fact directly shut down anything. I don't think it would. It's a, as Council Member Bradford said, this is something that used to be a bill and now it can be a resolution. So it used to be a three meeting situation anyway. Um, so I'd be supportive of learning more and then potentially a deferral um, just to make sure the conversations um, that need to be had are being had um, and to support my, my colleague in his district. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Anybody else? Uh, Council Member Benedict. Uh, thank, yeah. thank you, Vice Chair. I think given the information that's been provided since I last spoke, I'm supportive of the deferral. So I just want to let my colleagues know that. Okay. Thank you, Council Member. All right. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody else have anything to add? If not, the motion on the table is a deferral. All in favor of the deferral. Can you all raise your hands so that I can actually count them? Okay. One, two, three, four. Five. Um, all opposed to a deferral? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And not voting? Did you? <laughs> I'm trying to see who didn't vote. I've got five and five, but. Council Member Horton, how did you vote? Or, okay. Favor, okay, can I? Six, okay, so six, I didn't either. Sorry. Um, sorry, it's sometimes it's hard to see up here when we don't have the little machines. Um, so that was six in favor of deferral, five against, so it is deferred. And we we need little cards. Um, <laughs> it's Margaret just wrapped this up. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can hold up the cards. That would make it easier to see. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> she, she, she says we've taken it too far. Okay. <laughs> Number nine, BL 2024-254, Hancock, Huffman, Horton, and others, amends Title 15 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws relative to infrastructure investment for offsite construction. Um, it, Council Member Hancock, I do not believe that you are a member of this committee, but would you like to be recognized? And then um, I believe Council Member Horton, who is the sponsor, is if you um, need somebody to move. Um... 
Thank you very much for recognizing me, even though I'm not a member of this committee. It's super awesome to be able to come out here on a Monday. Love that. Um, so the uh, bill has a substitute that I um, filed, and the substitute was intended to be in line with House Bill 2925 and Senate Bill 2834, which passed on Thursday. It's so my understanding those have not been signed into law yet, and um, I'm going to defer to a legal opinion of Council Member Horton if you'd like to um, recognize someone on this committee to talk further about it. Okay, uh, Council Member Horton. Council Member Horton, do you, um, Council Member Hancock is not a member of the committee. She has a substitute. Do you want to speak on BL 2024-254? Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, I would just like to echo the comments of the sponsor. Um, I, I guess I would defer to her whether she would like to make a deferral or withdrawal or move for approval today. Oh, these things, they look backwards to me. It takes me a second. Okay, go ahead. I feel like I'm on the hot seat. Um, so it's my understanding that if we deferred today, it would be the same thing as a withdrawal, essentially, because it's the third deferral. It wouldn't. Did I find um, out more? Yeah. It would be a third deferral, which would mean that it would be an indefinite deferral. Um, and it would be required to stay off of the agenda for at least 60 days. But after 60 days, you could request to put it back on the agenda. So after consulting with um, council member counselors, as well as um, our council and Metro Legal, I think that I would move, would prefer a move to withdraw the bill so that, or can I make that move even though I'm not on the committee? Um, um, you can request that somebody on the yeah. committee do it. I, it's the Monday reason, fun day. We're nice here. Yeah, the reason I'd like to do that is so that we can dot all of our I's and, and cross all of our T's. On Friday, we were kind of rushing to put this in before the deadline, and I don't want to have anything that's out of line with this the state legislation so that we can um, work hand-in-hand hand with that. Okay. Um, would somebody Thank like you. to move for withdrawal? Uh, it's just it's oh. withdrawal. Oh, okay, done. All right, item 10, BL 2024-306 designates a certain portion of 2nd Avenue North as a tourism improvement zone and to grant the businesses that front thereon certain privileges. Um, sponsored by Coupon, Porterfield, Evans, and others. Council Member Coupon, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Chair. I'd like to move for approval with a brief, or sorry, um, move for approval with a brief comment. Yes. Uh, do I have a second? Thank you. Um, so we're going to move for approval in committee today. I am adding a late filed amendment on this. It became kind of came to light um, late Friday afternoon that there is a section of uh, section three on this bill that talks about closing the street that was causing some confusion um, in the public and some members of the body. Um, the street has already been closed. It's been closed for construction. Y'all should all have packets on your desk kind of showing some photos of that. Um, but the, the goal of the bill was not to close the street as much as it's already been closed and then we're doing things to respond to that. Um, but inadvertently, uh, if this passed as it was currently written, it might keep parts of the street closed that are supposed to reopen as the, as the project gets completed. So we're just kind of cleaning that up. Um, didn't want anybody to be surprised tomorrow when that comes through um, as a late file. So move for approval in this committee. Um, wanted everybody to know what's going on and uh, really appreciate everyone's support. All right, uh, thank you, Council Member Allen. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I do support this, and I had spoken with uh, Council Member Coopin about um, how the dark skies um, legislation regulations apply to this, and it, I, I would just like clarification from um, from Ms. Darby. The way the regulations are written, it specifically exempts Second Avenue from the second from those regulations, with the exception of three specific. Uh, paragraphs D2, 3, and 4, something like that. One of which simply says no searchlights aimed up at the sky. And so I would just like clarification that I don't need to add any amendment to specifically point that out that it is already covered by what's in the code. Can you confirm that, please, ma'am? Give me one second to pull, uh, pull this up again. Sorry, I should have warned you ahead of time. 
And there is there is reference in here to dark sky lighting, dark sky compliant lighting, which I'm very grateful for. And I think we should do whatever we can to help those folks on Second Avenue, not only stay in business, but thrive. So short of allowing them to shoot searchlights up in the sky. I think Council Member Coopin has something to add while um, Council is pulling up her notes. Thank you, Vice Chair. Well, uh, Council's pulling up their notes, I believe. Uh, um, Director Alarcon has approached the podium if she'd like to speak. Oh. Or maybe not sorry, speak. Director. About the dark sky and the searchlights. Okay. Um, and the lack thereof. <laughs> I was going to let you do it. I'm sorry. Uh, oh. Director, you are recognized. Thank you very much. So uh, downtown is actually already exempt from the dark skies ordinance, but we are going, everything that they do, they do have to come through and permit. And we are going to be very respectful of that, given what's already going on. But if there is an opportunity, you and I had spoken, the big streaming of the lights is something we would not actually want to promote, but there's other lighting things we would like to do that we think would be able to catch or some attention and bring people down the second avenue. So we're going to be very mindful of that and all permitting must go through NDOT before they can proceed forward. Okay. Um, do you want to add? I, just real quickly, yeah, the legislation does not specifically, the legislation that you're considering today, it does not specifically address dark skies, but there is the provision in there that for any of the exemptions for outdoor lighting, they would have to get approval from NDOT. So if NDOT is going to, you know, ensure um, lighting restrictions, then that would be covered. Thank you for that. Does anybody else? All right, um, seeing none, all in favor say aye. All opposed? Anyone not voting? Okay. Number 11, BL 2024-307, Greg and Bradford amends the geographic information system, street and alley center line on layer for the Metropolitan Government by renaming J.B. Estill Drive between Lebanon Pike and Old Lebanon Pike to Donaldson Station Boulevard. Um, we have a letter um, from uh, Council Member Greg to defer one meeting. Uh, do we have a motion? Move to on defer the... one meeting. All right. Um, moved and seconded. Does anyone have anything to add? All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? All right. Done. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.